what I found with Corrie Miller was it presented a neutral meeting place. I've been able to meet people of all ranges, all walks of life. It's been a really excellent opportunity to put different viewpoints at, um, forward to other people. I think it's taught me to be tolerant, patient, um, and it's made me feel good about myself and um, I'm really glad that I came here. It would be hard to find a more beautiful setting for Corrie Miller's residential centre just outside Ballycastle on Ireland's North Antrim coast. But Corrie Miller is more than a place by the sea. Sixty miles away in Belfast City, Corrie Miller House is another meeting place. Whether in Ballycastle or Belfast, Corrie Miller is people, a community of Christians who are unwilling to accept the division and violence of their society and have dedicated themselves to work for reconciliation and peace. There are 160 members of the Corrie Miller community scattered throughout Northern Ireland and further afield who live out their commitment to peace in their daily lives. Corrie Miller came about through the leadership of Ray and Kathleen Davy. During the war, Ray had worked for the YMCA among the troops in North Africa before he was taken prisoner of war. When he returned to Belfast, he was appointed as the first full-time Presbyterian chaplain to Queen's University. Ray decided that his role as chaplain was to create a sense of Christian community. In time, his work led to a purpose-built community centre. Ray's work at building community at Queen's sowed the seeds of Corrie Mila. One of the things that I did as university chaplain was to take uh, groups of students outside Ireland, outside this, this particular way of thinking, and go to Germany where I'd had experiences in the war and in it to Italy and indeed to France and Spain and it wasn't just to have a, a sort of nice holiday or to take part in a work camp it was to try and help us all to see uh, different approaches. In northern Italy high up in the Cotian Alps Ray and a group of students discovered the Agape community founded by Pastor Tullio Vinai to heal bitter divisions that followed the German occupation during the war. A group of young people involved on both sides of the bitter guerrilla fighting had discovered the gospel's message of healing and hope. To show their gratitude, they decided to create a visible witness to Christ in the Alps by forming a Christian community of love. The students visited the Iona community in Scotland where tradesmen and theological students together rebuilt the ancient abbey, the sacred and secular working together for God. When they'd come back, they would ask the inevitable question, well, it's lovely to go to these other places and learn about what they're doing. What about us in Northern Ireland? For a whole year, they met, studied and prayed. The upshot of quite a series of meetings and come, meeting together with some older people who had similar ideas and, and uh, hopes was the, the starting of the Corrie Miller community. And that led uh, to looking for a place. And we looked around many parts of Northern Ireland and eventually the uh, Bally Castle, the Corrie Miller uh, Holiday Fellowship House came up and we were very fortunate and been able to uh, buy that and, and that gave focus uh, to our work. The opening ceremony took place on the 30th of October 1965, several years before the current violence began, and included a procession of volunteers who had given up their weekends and holidays to transform a dilapidated wooden structure into a centre fit for the work of the newly formed community. The centre was opened by Tullio Vinai of the Agape community. But more accommodation was urgently needed. Those early years were a succession of work camps. At a time of world student unrest, here students were building for the future. A sense of community was created by working together. It was demanding work 
but no one doubted the importance of what was being created. The whole venture was an act of faith. There were no financial resources, but enough money was found. Right, go ahead. The work of volunteers is still central to the life of the centre at Ballycastle. It's been very different uh, over the six months. Um, things come along that you don't expect. It's sometimes extremely difficult, very, very tiring, physically um, and emotionally as well. But I have enjoyed the experience immensely. I just love this place so much. David is from Kent in England and is spending a year as a volunteer at Ballycastle. He heard about Corrymeela when he was in Atlanta, Georgia, in the United States. Didn't really know what to expect of Northern Ireland, let alone Corrymeela. Um, and I guess it's been a really, a real great educational value, being in this country, meeting all these people. Working in Corrymeela, I'm more, um, I find that I get more laid back, you know, I'm not, I used to be very tense about organisation, I thought everything had to be organised, it's probably because I'm German and now, now when things are chaotic I don't really mind so much, you know, just let things flow. Corrie Miller deliberately includes people from home and abroad, young and not so young, each has a unique contribution. With over 8,000 residents each year, the work never ends for the 30 staff and 10 volunteers under the leadership of a centre director. At the centre here, we try to work together as a team. And what goes on in the front of the, of the centre here very much depends on all the backroom people who are involved in creating space for the programmes and things to work. So we're very much depending on each other in our relationships with, together. And uh, for those involved in the kitchen and administration and helping in the grounds, and so many other ways, including the toilets. And this, all these things are clearly worked out and uh, uh, the centre is ready to receive guests. Um, that is really part of our preparation and our own background. It's important to recognise everybody's place and uh, to be able to value each other so that when people are coming in, we as the staff are able to relate to them at all sorts of different levels and the friendly word in the reception or outside is just as important as what's going on in some of the programme discussions. Corrymeela is an open village that belongs to the people of Northern Ireland. Anyone in harmony with its aims is welcome to use its resources. School groups from different religious traditions meet here for residential programmes. So do the young unemployed. During the summer, families who find themselves under stress as a result of the violence come for a break. Single parents, prisoners' families and the bereaved. Christian education, political conferences and courses on conflict resolution are just part of Corrie Miller's work for reconciliation. Each year, a group of young people from widely differing backgrounds are invited to spend a series of weekends together at Corrie Miller. They are encouraged to cross barriers of fear and ignorance to confront the issues which lie at the roots of Northern Ireland's troubles. The programme is called the Seed Group. This, this trust which is built up in the Seed Group, in which the opposite religions can express themselves, and they can tell us of, of their fears, and it's the honesty which really uh, just portrays everything. Uh, actually, being able to hear what the other religion fear about yourself, which is quite, it's amazing to hear. It's common that young people of different traditions live apart and don't mix. The seed group becomes a place of meeting and attitudes change. Well, when you think of the North, you think of violence and killings and all that. But when you come down here, it's completely different. Like, before I came, I was afraid to come down here at first. But now I'd, I'd live down here. I like it down here. Because of the good mix that um, there was in the seed group, not only the... Uh, the Protestant Catholic mix, but also the different social classes. And then, of course, the people we had from the south of Ireland as well, I think, um, brought out a lot of um, very, very different opinions and made me question a lot of um, viewpoints and values that I've held for a number of years from my background. Part of the richness of the seed group is because of the wide variety of where they're coming from. Uh, not only Protestant Catholic backgrounds, uh, but 
but people from the south, people from the north, country areas, city areas, people who are unemployed, people who are student types, uh, middle class, working class, so that there's a richness there that we can learn from each other from different angles, different perceptions of what, uh, what our own experiences have been living in Northern Ireland or the south. Hopefully you're scattering seeds where people can learn about themselves, learn about others, and in a sense get themselves together in life. So we feel that we're offering that possibility to people in a particularly Northern Ireland situation, which in many ways is very closed, Catholic communities closed, Protestant communities closed. So in a sense we're breaking across that barrier, helping people hopefully to create in the long term a new future. The future belongs to the young. Corrie Miele has three members of staff who specialise in youth work, from the very young to teens and twenties. Firstly, we offer a space to young people. That's a neutral space in Corrie Miele House in Belfast where they can meet. We would offer them, if possible, transport if they were having difficulties in coming across boundaries and coming across frontiers, where they can actually facilitate that if you like those meetings happening. We offer them ourselves and what experience we have, even if it is limited and helping them to work together and see new ways forward and new possibilities. Uh, some groups come, they like to stay quite close to themselves. They arrive firstly on the bus, and there's a territory thing. So one group go to the back of the bus, one group stay at the front of the bus, and they own that space. Sometimes we can watch the dynamics change because towards the end, the group at the back and the front have mixed somewhere in the middle. And that's a very outward sign, if you like, a very practical or tangible sign of a change in their relationships with each other. The city of Belfast is the centre for much of Corrie Miele's work through community members who live here and work out their commitment to peace in their local community. This housing estate is 100% Protestant. It's possible to live here, play in the streets until you leave school and never to have known a Roman Catholic person. On this road you are crossing through a break in the peace line, an iron and concrete wall which divides Protestant ghettos from Catholic ghettos. Here you won't find a Protestant. But Corrymeela's buses have always come in and out of these areas, even in the height of the Troubles. Mary McGuinness is a Corrie Miele member working in Turf Lodge in Catholic West Belfast. She leads a project sponsored by Save the Children Fund, providing a family centre in a neighbourhood where the scars of long-term poverty and deprivation are plain to see. Working in partnership with the parents, the centre provides a playgroup and after-school facilities. For some, a women's group provides an opportunity for further education. But the constant battle is against apathy and despair the feeling of being trapped in one's poverty. Mary McGuinness brings the families to Corrie Miele for a week in the summer. They can meet other people who are perhaps maybe from Protestant communities and they do meet up with them and get to know them. Probably they wouldn't have the chance to do this in, in their own local community. At Corrie Miele they meet other women like Doreen Tarr from a Protestant background. Doreen came first to Corrie Miele with her young children 12 years ago. You're always inclined to think the other side, the other religion, they're different. But through meeting people of other religion and Corrie Miele and got to up and tell them, I found completely different, that they have the same problems, especially regarding the presence. They have the same problems that I have. Alastair Kogor teaches 11 to 16 year old boys in a largely Protestant area of East Belfast. His pupils reflect the area's strong loyalist attitudes. Many only know Catholics as people to throw stones at. At Corrie Miele, they share a weekend together. They first of all come to meet each other, and that for me is the crucial thing. They actually make a meeting. They discover that there's very little difference between themselves and the other side. That the, the problems of growing up in East Belfast are very much the same as the problems of growing up in West Belfast. Hazelwood College is different. For most children, there are schools for Protestants and schools for Catholics. Corrymeela members were among those working in their own localities for another way of education, 
where differences could be appreciated and learned from. After many years' pressure, integrated schools now offer a third option in education. Josie O'Hara was involved from the start. Through my membership with Curry Mila, I was asked to become involved in Hazelwood schools. And I was delighted because I thought that this was another part of Curry Mila to me. The school has been going now four years and um, at the minute we have a waiting list in all our schools, both the nursery, the primary and the secondary school. Corrymeela members are scattered throughout the province. Armagh town lies close to the border with the Republic. For Protestants and Catholics, it's the ecclesiastical capital of Ireland because of its association with St. Patrick. The Church of Ireland Cathedral is on the spot where Patrick built his premier church in Ireland in 445 AD. Armagh is home for Anglican and Roman Catholic primates. The Catholic Cathedral is on another hill nearby. The whole town, its planning and its architecture bears the stamp of the power of former archbishops. During the Dark Ages, this was a seat of learning for all of Europe. Today, Armagh is deeply disturbed by the Troubles. The weight of Christian history has been unable to prevent deep division and fear. Mary Healy finds her membership of Corrymeela a support for a difficult task. My situation in Armagh has had its ups and downs at times. I was involved as a leader of Peace People Group in Armagh and we as a family were intimidated. Um, that resulted in a a very big challenge whether to go ahead with um, ecumenical interchurch work um, and which I decided to go ahead with that. At the other end of the province is Coleraine in the north. It's a town which is proud to display its Protestant ethos. It's a town which is loyal to crown and country. It's also home for Corrie Miller members Jim and Anne Jack. They know the problems of a Protestant marrying a Catholic in Northern Ireland. It often seems as a betrayal of your own people. My involvement with Corrie Mila has been very helpful to me because it has given the whole family a lot of support. And uh, when we come down here during the community weekends, the children do get a lot from it. And uh, they have been coming here for many years now. Jim and Anne Jack are founder members of NIMA, the Northern Ireland Mixed Marriage Association. Like the pressure group for integrated education, the hospice movement, and a number of other voluntary agencies, it came about with significant help from Corrie Mila members. Also from Coleraine, Isabel McDonough works as a hospice community nurse. She finds Coleraine a peaceful town, where you can all too easily ignore the violence experienced in other parts of Northern Ireland. Corrymeela members commit themselves to work for a society which encourages the participation of all. Members also agree to pray for each other, so like many other centres, Coleraine has a cell group of Corrymeela members. We are all working in different parts of the community, some in, in social work activities, some in the church, um, some lecturing at the university, a very wide cross-section of people. And there we support each other uh, in doing various things. Um, and also we support each other when we get really uh, despairing and, and fed up. And uh, in worshipping together as a group of Catholics and Protestants together, we find that we have a unity there. Corrie Miller has found that differences can be resolved when people are willing to get around the table and talk. Conferences involving politicians from opposing political parties, unable to hold formal discussions, can chat informally at Corrymeela. We don't have any particular political philosophy to put across, but we, we do feel that we can provide uh, an opportunity for the people from across the political spectrum to come together and uh, you know, perhaps just in, in the atmosphere of Corrymeela, that, uh, generate some new thinking and, 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 and some uh, dialogue. Bringing reconciliation and peace to Northern Ireland is more than a worthy sentiment. It's a matter of life and death. 
This playground at the Corrymeela Centre is built in memory of a community worker who was killed for his work for reconciliation. Maura Kiley knows personally the pain of losing a member of your family in the Troubles. In 1975, Maura's son, Gerard, was killed by a sectarian murder gang who shot him down as he came out of church in South Belfast. As a result of Gerard's death, Maura founded the Cross Group. I, after some time, had a great need to meet somebody else who had suffered under similar circumstances because you must remember that there was nothing that would have met my need. There was no organization that would have met my need at that particular time. And so I decided that I would go out and try to find some of the people who had lost loved ones. And I went to the newspaper offices, leafed through old newspapers and came up with about 100 names. I contacted, I suppose, about 60 of them. And then my big problem was, where would I meet? Because because it was a mixed group, I knew that it would have to be neutral ground. And I had a friend called Father McAvoy, who was working in Queens, and he was very friendly with Ray Davy, whom I had never heard about. And he said that we could meet in number eight Upper Crescent, which turned out to be Corrymeela House in Belfast. And we had our first meeting there in October 75. And we met and have been meeting regularly on a monthly basis for the past 15 years. The Cross Group, founded out of suffering, continues to bring support to those bereaved through the Troubles. Northern Ireland is a deeply religious society. Church attendance is very high, but the vast number of churches have been unable to end the bitterness and the violence. Some even claim that religion is more a part of the problem than of the solution. Corrymeela is not another church. Its members come from many churches to work and pray for peace here at the Cree, the worship centre at Ballycastle. It's only as we walk on that new journey with Christ and discover what it means that we will have anything to share at all with others. The most important event for every Corrymeela community member is the dedication service held each year. This is a Christian community. Each member receives a promise of Christ from scripture to give them strength for their work of peacemaking during the coming year. I think one way of describing the Corrymeela community would be uh, people on a journey. Of course, that journey is in the context of a divided society here in Northern Ireland, but I think it's a journey we share with people from all traditions uh, all over the world. And of course, it's above all a journey of faith, uh, a journey out of fear and division into uh, new relationships. And I think, of course, it's also a journey uh, towards community, a search for community. Uh, we've been pretty good in Ireland at building <laughs> exclusive community, but I think we've got to learn how to build inclusive community. And finally, I would say it's a journey of hope. Hope which I think is based on our conviction that Christ is with us, but that he's also leading us forward in a new direction, into a new future. But for the moment, the peace line in Belfast exists as an iron wall to keep Catholics and Protestants apart. The religious dimension of Northern Ireland's problems is not overlooked. Certainly it would be our experience here that a lot of those who come to Corrymeela don't come from a ch strong church background. They come from outside any of the church structures. And they look at the church structures around them. And they very often see those as divisive structures. And they therefore ask, does Christian faith really have anything to offer to us other than division? And that's part of our challenge to, to make clear that the gospel does have something quite different than what they have often seen portrayed as Christianity. That the gospel has 
a deeper power to unite and to, to reconcile people across all kinds of divisions. For the last number of years, Corrymeela has held conferences for church leaders. Ministers and priests from many denominations come from different parts of Northern Ireland and the Republic. They are working in very different situations, but they find this conference a chance to share common concerns of Christian ministry, to learn from each other's experience and insight, as well as discussing the topics which still divide. Reconciliation for me is taking the very first step and trying to invite people together in very small, non-frightening ways, so that people through relationships can grow to trust each other, uh, to understand the things that are wrong in our communities, that attitudes are wrong, prejudices are wrong, and some and other in themselves try to heal that. One of the things for me that Corrymeela means in the future is that, that ordinary people coming from different traditions can continue to meet and work on issues of social justice, of community development, of community relations, of, uh, of contacts between churches and contacts between schools. Those are, those are where the seeds take, take deeper root. Something of the joy and hope that Corrie Miller brings individuals is thrown open to a wider public every second year in Summerfest, a celebration of Christian faith with its workshops, speakers, activities, and a chance to meet others. Over 600 people come for the best part of a week, with hundreds more each day. The City of Reading is focused for Corrie Miller support in England. From this church hall, over two and a half thousand pounds are sent to Corrie Miller in Northern Ireland every month. Corrie Miller Link, as they call themselves, keep 18 support groups throughout England in touch with one another. The Link exists primarily to develop understanding of Corrie Miller's work. 30,000 churches receive information about Corrie Miller Sunday when Christians throughout Great Britain pray for the work of Corrie Miller. A well-prodded map is a measure not only of the speaking engagements, but of the commitment of Corrie Miller Link in England. People have become involved in Corrie Miller and have been supporting our work from absolutely all over the world. And indeed, without this, uh, a lot of the developments in our programme would have been impossible. And one of the uh, networks which allow people to share information and to be fully informed uh, about our work is the Friends of Corrymeela. Special weekends are held at Corrymeela Centre at Ballycastle for Friends, when they can meet community members and staff and get a real feel of what Corrymeela stands for and is able to achieve. The whole work of reconciliation belongs to us all. No one has a monopoly of it. And we want to work in partnership in the future with anyone who shares our vision. Corrie Miller is a sign of what can be achieved. Its members are divided by age, denomination and politics. But they've found they can begin to accept one another through the love of Christ. And there's a saying, Corrie Miller begins when you leave. Um, I think if politicians listen to this and if politicians came here and if they could do what we're doing here, I think Northern Ireland would be a hell of a better place. <laughs>